Hello and welcome to another episode of Mortgage Video Mastermind, where we bring you professionals who share insight into the latest trends, tips, industry, technology, and services to help you create more videos to use in your mortgage business. Well, hi there and welcome to another Friday edition of our Mortgage Video Mastermind live Facebook group. My name is Ginger Bell and today I'm coming to you from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. So you can kind of see some trees in the background. It's going to be a hot, hot day here. And today I have Scott Shang who is joining me and I'm getting a little bit of feedback here. And our special guest is Laura Brandeo who is the president of AFR Wholesale. And we're so excited to have you here today. So hello, Scott. Hello, Laura. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, we're excited to have you here. So, Laura, you and I had an opportunity to meet for the very first time a couple weeks ago in San Diego at the camp conference. But we've actually co-authored a book together that's a best-selling book. We've won some awards together. And we met for the very first time physically, but we felt like we know each other for a long time. And that is because of video. Isn't, isn't that amazing? I mean, Scott, it was so funny. Here I am, I'm walking down the street in San Diego by the hotel. I'm having a whole conversation with my husband and I hear from behind me, Laura. And I turn around and for the very first time, Ginger and I meet in person. But yes, we felt we've been friends for years all because of video. Yep. Absolutely. I think the first time you and I met was when you started the video series when COVID hit and right. you were providing it, you know, advice and uplifting everybody and seeing what everybody was doing while they were locked down. So this is a whole, we met through video community right here. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And think about that, Scott, right? So yes, you were a guest on, I don't remember if it was Survive and Thrive or Thrive Thursday at that time. It was it was Survive and Thursday. Thrive, I think is what it was called. There yeah. you go. But think yeah. about that, right? We yeah. had, you were nominated, you came on, you shared the experience of adjusting to COVID and then how you were thriving through it. So yeah. although we had never met physically, we connected and bonded and and formed a memory together. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, cool. I would walk up to you in a, I would walk up to you at a conference now and say, Laura, <laughs> it was like well, no problem at all. <laughs> of course. Well, and that's what we did, even though we hadn't met. I mean, here we are in the street and I'm walking, leaving the hotel, and I see her. I'm like, Laura, Laura, I'm like tracking her down like a crazy fan. <laughs> she turns around, she's like, Oh my gosh, who is that? It's like, I can't believe I get to meet you. It was so awesome. Yeah, so Laura, I want to really have you share your story because you've been around the industry for a very long time, um, but really became a celebrity by making the commitment to do video. So what was the very first thing that you started and what made you really commit to doing that to where you got to be all these other things that you're doing? Absolutely. Well, it all started in 2018 when I got up on a stage for the very first time at an AIM regional conference, the first AIM conference. That was where it all started. Right. And I was very, very scared because during that whole time in my industry, I had never gone to conferences. Forget about being on a stage. I didn't go to conferences wow. because I was the person back at the office making sure that the files were moving along and being involved in the day to day of the organization. No one ever invited me to go to a conference and I really didn't even think about it. But when I was invited to that very first one, I said yes to doing it. But then a few weeks before that, I got very nervous. I thought to myself, oh my God, how am I going to do this? I did wind up doing it. And at that moment, I had a line of women come up to me and say, Laura, thank you for being on that stage. 
because you showed us that we as women have an opportunity to be whatever we want to be in the mortgage industry. We right. can be broker owners. We can be presidents. We can be the top originators. We can be anything we want to be. And at that moment, I decided I would never let fear hold me back from anything again. And that I had to set the stage. Now, right. Going along with not being on a stage, I also had zero social media, zero. I wasn't on Facebook. I was barely on LinkedIn. I was nowhere. But I decided that if I was going to be that forward thinking person out in the marketplace, I needed to be on social media. And then once I started doing that, I thought, well, how do I really get a wide reach video? And I knew in my mind, I'm a business executive, right? I'm thinking to myself, how do you make sure you get something done? You add accountability. So right. I wasn't going to, oh, I'm too busy to post today, or I'm, I'm working on this. I can't do that. I said to myself, if I do something that's tied to a day and I actually say the date in my video, then I'm held accountable because I know there's not a chance of me not doing it. Right. And so I started with Motivational Monday where I filmed them on the weekend and I state the date and I post it every Monday morning, regardless of what Monday it is. And I have never missed a Monday, regardless of COVID, regardless of a holiday, no matter what was happening, there is always a Motivational Monday. Right. So, and so to back that up, first of all, you, you said, okay, I'm going to, I want to get out on social. I want to be able to, to be seen and be involved. So yeah, video is an opportunity to do that, but you selected a, a consistent vehicle. So it gave you something to focus on. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with is that, what should I talk about? And so you said, motivational Monday and they're always great and they're you know you could talk about you know focus you can talk about you know being tough overcoming adversity I mean whatever but it gives you that ability to really have a broad range of topics the other thing I love is you didn't have to say okay I'm gonna do this you know on Monday at nine o'clock and then I'm busy at nine so I can't do it but you recorded it ahead of time put the date in it. So again, the accountability, so you know you have to post it, right? And it doesn't run into that fear of, oh my gosh, you know, I've got an, a conflict, or I've got a meeting, or I'm flying. So being able to record it ahead of time, and, and you can on social media platforms through different applications like Hootsuite, put that up there and time it to post out. So there's really no reason for you not to have that commitment every single week of doing it, right? That is exactly right. And and I will tell you, in time, my husband actually, he's the one holding the camera, right? right. So now we've made this part of our weekend routine. We yeah, literally, it's like, where are we filming Motivational Monday <laughs> this weekend? And I mean, it's become part of our relationship is cool. filming Motivational Monday. Like, it, right. so it just goes to show you, if you change your mindset of having fun with it, and not overthinking and not trying to overcomplicate it and just go with it. I never re-record. I never have a script. I just come up with a concept and I and I speak. And that's where that being authentic and just being yourself comes into play. Absolutely. So and with that, so you started with the Motivational Monday. How long before you started really seeing a lift in terms of making connections? It was pretty quick. It was it was rather fast because all of a sudden people are like, wait a minute, this woman isn't necessarily even speaking about mortgage. The reason right. why I don't speak about mortgage is remember, I'm the president of a company with lots of compliance people. <laughs> so, so I think about saying, okay, Laura, what are you doing? <laughs> yes. So I deliberately stay away from things that maybe my compliance person might be like, no, 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 you can't, right. you can't comment on right. that topic or you can't say this without also reading out your NMLS or, or saying a APR disclosure, you know? So I deliberately 
made it so it was things that could resonate with the mortgage industry, but right. it wasn't specific. And I really want to call that out because sometimes, again, we think that we have to be speaking about mortgage rates or we have to be speaking about inventory or we have to be, and those things are fine as an originator, but you don't always have to be speaking about those things. Well, and, and I would, I would also, I would also add that it just, it adds such a, an element of humanity to what you do. So people get to know you as you and who you are. So you're more approachable at mortgage events because you'd love to have conversations about mortgage when it's appropriate in the space that it's mortgages. So now because you put yourself out there, people feel like they know you as a person and you're not this mortgage executive that oh my gosh i can't approach this mortgage executive and it will I'll, I'll actually i'll be honest I'll, i'm i'm gonna be vulnerable here um i saw you at aim they were doing that vendor event i think it was november or yep. it was in 2019 it was november and went up there and you spoke and i'm like i always liked her and i'm like but I'm not going to approach a mortgage executive and say something like I didn't know you at that time. And, and it was because it, it was almost like, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a very introverted and shy person. Anyhow. I remember but, that. I yeah. remember that from Survive and Thrive. <laughs> right. Right. So I wouldn't have come up to you in a million years, but now if I see you anywhere in person, you're getting a huge hug, right? Because of all of the, because of the video and because of the humanity and it just shows who we are as people. We are not what we do. And you're showing who you are. And, and, and I think that's so important in today. Um, and that's the importance of video. And that's the importance of putting that kind of content out there. So that's, that's, that's actually, that's my little story. It's like, I wouldn't even hesitate to come up and see you now, but I was in, I was intimidated when I saw you the first time, everybody's like, Oh, Laura's awesome. I'm like, no, she is awesome, but I'm not going to go up there and say anything to her. <laughs> well, well, you're you're kind of like, well, what do I say? How do yeah, I start yeah, a conversation? No, exactly. Right? Uh, 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 hey, Laura, I'm a guy. Uh, I just want to say you? hi. You know, I don't know. But Man. now, like you said, you, you wouldn't even second guess it, right? No. You would automatically no. be like, no. I know her. I have yeah. this relationship. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that commitment of doing it and having that consistency and being a person and being authentic. You know, we had Alan um, Christensen on. He talked about being raw. Yeah. And, and shoot it. Don't worry about, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, fully edited. Um, but it does have to be consistent, number one. So I think that's one of the keys for you is that consistency. Because if you just did it like, you know, once in a while, you would not have that consistency of people seeing you all the time. So I think that repeat is very important. And, and that's a good point, Ginger, because let, let's just speak honest, right? Let's just speak honest. How many times do we see people in our industry start something and mm -hmm. it's good. It's not that it's not good, but you see it disappear. Yep. Like you see it just fall by the wayside for whatever reason. That is a reflection on them. I don't think people realize that when you bail on something, that actually indicates how you are. So you don't want to do that. The more you're consistent and people view you that way, that kind of is your perception of how you work, how you treat your family and your families you serve in the mortgage industry. So think twice before you start something and you bail on it. Right. Well, I, I'd like to add something to that, too, because one of the bigger challenges with producing content and creating video is you don't always get feedback loops. Right. Sometimes people just watch and people listen, but they don't comment. And, and quite frankly, most people that comment on social media are kind of like the trolley kind of people or they have a complaint <laughs> or something. You'll Sometimes you'll get people if you have a big enough social sphere. Um, but that that's a really, really good point because just because you're not getting a, a feedback loop doesn't mean that people aren't paying attention. I have people come up all the time and say, oh, you're putting out so much stuff. You do all this stuff. And I'm like, I had no idea anybody was watching, you know, <laughs> I just, I, I didn't know that anybody saw that thing and you just don't know the over. I, what I always say is if you get one person that says something, 
there is exponentially greater number of people that are watching it that just aren't saying anything. So it's that's so, so important. If you're passionate about it and if you care, keep doing it. Even if people aren't coming and giving you feedback, um, and then anybody who's listening out there, if you see somebody posting something, give them feedback and say, this is really fantastic. Keep up the great work because sometimes we need that because it's really, really hard to put yourself out there and be vulnerable into a black hole with no feedback, knowing if anybody's paying attention and do I am I, am I doing something stupid? Is that why nobody's saying something? But it's never that if you're being genuine and you're just putting yourself out there. That is such a good point, Scott, because you're right. You know, as humans, we need feedback and we need interaction, right? We're looking for some type of interaction, but you have to know going in that the majority of people are not going to comment or they're not going to necessarily. But I promise you, you are making an impact. You are affecting other people, people that maybe you'll never even meet. Because, I mean, I think all of us probably have stories where no. we'll meet someone. Yeah, go ahead, Ginger. I, <laughs> I think we all can give stories where we meet someone and mm -hmm. someone comments on something we did, you know, in person, where they're yeah. like, oh, my God, I listened to this and I changed how I do this or how I approach it or I learned this from you. We are making an impact. You are making an impact, but you have to do video. It, the the other part of this is is you have a very strong personality and and I mean you're very uh, you're you're very outspoken you're very confident, um, but there's still this the, I think most human beings have an insecurity like they're afraid to put themselves out there and I heard a quote one time and I can't remember who said it originally but it said bravery isn't the absence of fear it's being scared but doing it anyhow. And, and I think that's so important because it, it's even you, you, even though you have to put it out there, even if you're scared, even if you think you're going to look dumb, you're going to say something, it doesn't matter because the reality is we go through life every single day talking to strangers and spontaneously coming up with topics and conversations. And it's the exact same thing. It's, it's almost like we, if we could mentally erase this screen or that lens or that light, it's is just how we communicate every single day. And yet there's this mental hurdle and there's this, there's always this questioning yourself and you're doubting, you know, does anybody going to, is anybody going to care about what I'm talking about? But if you talk to anybody in your life about the things that you talk about and they care, then people are going to care if you put it on video. That is right. And and I'm going to give you a trick, Scott. You know, when you speak about confidence or or having this insecurity, right? Number one, it's funny. When I went up on the stage for the first time or I started doing video, I used to say, why didn't I start doing this like 10 years earlier when I was 10 <laughs> years younger, right? I have to start doing this in my 40s. Like, my goodness, I wish I was in my 30s. And I realized I wasn't ready yet. That wasn't the right point in my life mm. to start doing it. Mm. But here's, here's the trick. I'm going to give you the trick. The whole trick to doing anything when you're fearful is to think about someone else. The day that I had those line of women saying that thank you for being on that stage i realized that every time i do a video every time i say something every time i'm on a show like this with you wonderful people if i can inspire one other person to get out there and be confident mm -hmm. about themselves then it doesn't matter how if someone perceives me and says what is that crazy lady right. that has all that energy it doesn't matter because if I inspired one person to be confident in themselves and be authentic and get their message out on video and grow their businesses and be successful, then I'm happy. Right. Yeah, well, and we, being yourself we, is important because I think people see other people on video and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't have that much energy or I'm not, you know, I, I don't know if I can do that or I'm more shy. Um, you have to be yourself because that that comes through so if you're not who you are um i mean you have to smile you have to have you know all of that enunciate and those kind of things but you want to be true to who you are so and I, and I and i also don't want to brush over what laura just said because we've 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 said this several times in in these 
topics and in other times when we're talking about content, you're always talking to one person. And video is not a, it, even though it's a one-to-many medium because a lot of people can see it and, and it can be impacted by it, you're always just talking to one person. Even when you're talking about a mortgage guideline or, or if you're doing something like that, you're talking to the one person that has that problem. And then all of the individuals that have that problem have an opportunity to see it because of the medium, because it's on video. But I think that's really important too, because it's scary talking to thousands of people. Mm -hmm. But if you know you're talking to one person and you're gonna impact that person's life and you're gonna make a difference in that person's life, give them the confidence that they needed just because you went up there or that message resonates with somebody and they're like, oh, I didn't know I could do that kind of mortgage and Laura's company does that kind of mortgage. So that's really cool. And, and I think that's really, really important. And that's a fantastic perspective. I'm so glad you brought that up. Absolutely. So Laura, I um, absolutely love what we did in California. At the yeah, Camp me too. Conference. <laughs> Laura, for her session, um, Laura had this brilliant idea to get everyone doing video. And it was one of those things. It's like, okay, can you do that? Because some people participate, some people won't. But you had a great idea because it was camp's 30th anniversary and you brought a bunch of props and we set people up. And um, David Luna brought in and donated the selfie sticks, which was awesome. And we made it very safe and comfortable for people to do it in groups. So share kind of what what your thought was and what the experience was like in going through that. You know, so it was so interesting because it all started. I have to start with the how how did we get there? So Audrey reaches out to me three weeks before the event on a, you know, eight o'clock at night, East Coast time. And she's like, hey, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Um, we have camp coming up in about three weeks. And I would love to have you come and speak. I'm like, Audrey. What am I speaking about? What's the topic? What she's like, whatever you want to do, you just come up with it. <laughs> so I'm like, well, if you trust me, I said, if you trust me, I would love because oh, and I asked her who else was speaking, and she mentioned Ginger Bell and Megan Anderson. And I'm like, great, love those ladies. If you trust me, I would like to do an interactive session where I will get up and I'll give a little who I am and you know, video and social media, but I need to go after Megan and Ginger. So they're going to go first and they're going to speak about how to do video and why you should do video. And then I'll come in at the end, I'll speak a little, and then we're going to have them actually make videos. So we prearranged everything. Like you said, we had the selfie sticks and I brought with me in my suitcase, a bunch of 30 celebration <laughs> so that fun. we have 30 glasses and 30 plates and 30 different things. Yeah. And so when we got up there and I brought them on stage, we literally said, no one is leaving this room. <laughs> you are in this room you're not leaving this room and we are going to help you make a video and then we even showed a few of them on the large screen so that we could all speak about the videos that they created right. well what happened after that number one scott i mean the energy in the room was like through the roof i mean everybody was laughing and joking and surprised and the thing is is that you could tell even after our session, they were more comfortable taking pictures and doing video after we did it. So not only did they do the task we asked, and they did wonderfully, you saw a change in them. You saw them actually, one woman, Dawn, she said, hey, I did it and <laughs> nothing happened. I didn't get struck by lightning. Yeah. I didn't break a leg. Nothing bad happened. Now I feel good about doing this again. Yeah. So we pushed up a little out of the comfort zone. And I have a running joke. I have a running joke that I'm at the point in my career that I'm going to cause people to do things for that I know are going to help them. So I am not afraid to push the envelope. I am not afraid to cause people to move forward as long as I know they're going to win from it. Right. 
Yeah, I just actually posted the link of some of the videos and it, it was the energy in the room was absolutely amazing. And we had comments like, I would have never done that on my own. And I didn't throw up, <laughs> didn't pass out. Yeah, yeah. And I lived through, I mean, that's honestly, yeah. and we don't think about that. No. You know, we forget that those are some of the feelings. And there were people that, you know, we made them group up and, and some of them didn't know each other. Nope. And afterwards, the bond was amazing. And Scott, this was really exciting because I know some of the things that we're um, putting together for the Content Creators Lab, which we're going to announce next week, um, is along that same line of getting people out of yeah. their comfort zone, getting them to doing those things. And it was and one of the most phenomenal things that I've ever seen. And so I, I want to do it again and again and again. I think it was fabulous. I, I would be willing to bet as a fly on the wall that the initial buzz and <laughs> laughter was just a lot of really nervous laughter. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, we're going to make us do this. I can't believe. But then afterwards, probably after that pressure was released and you did it and you're like, and that's literally it. If you don't throw up and you don't pass out, you're going to be a rock star. That's literally all you have to avoid right. is, just, is just don't drop in the middle of your film and then and then everything's going to be great. Yep. So I can I can only imagine seeing that energy going from that really nervous. Oh, my gosh. You know, the thing when Tony Robbins makes everybody stand up and rub each other's backs and everybody's right. like, oh, what's going on with this? And, <laughs> and I, but then by the end, everybody's kind of laughing like, oh, that didn't kill me. And it kind of felt good. You know, it was pretty cool. You know, so wow, that's amazing. That's, yeah. that's a great story. Yeah. 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 It was, you would have loved it. I mean, it was absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, uh, another thing as a side note, it was phenomenal to see all the women come together, meaning Audrey, Ginger, Megan, and I, literally standing united, coming together, saying, trust us. We've got you. This is a safe place. We're not going to make anyone feel uncomfortable. We're, we're here to support you. We're here to celebrate you. And it really was just a moment in time that just, it, it was special. Yeah. Special. Yep, absolutely. So we're getting near um, our time and I've dropped a couple of links into our chat. Um, and Scott and Laura and I, along with several other speakers, will be all together next Thursday. Mitch Peak is putting together an incredible event, which is the Mortgage Success Virtual. And I dropped the link. If you're not registered, get registered. Mitch, um, I know you're on. So if you want to add anything onto the chat, um, please do so. Scott and I are doing a session. We have Kelly Zitlow and we have Kyle Seagraves who's joining us and um, again, we're gonna talk about video and they're gonna talk about really their success with videos. So, you know, Kyle, 78,000 subscribers, Kelly has over, you know, she has thousands of subscribers, but really just being able to get started in some of the things that they did. So if you're not registered for that, get registered for that. And then next week um, we have um, Marvin Colon, and I know you know Marvin very well. He is the founder of Mort Flex. Mortflix is a streaming service dedicated completely to the mortgage industry and brilliant idea. So it's like Netflix, but it's for the mortgage industry. So I'm excited to have him on and to talk about video and these different opportunities. I mean, we're really at the beginning age and you say, you know, you wish you would have gotten started in video 10 years ago. Um, for the people that did get started in video 10 years ago, um, you know, they, if they stuck with it, they've been able to really build some momentum with it. And we have lots of great speakers coming on talking about that in August. Um, but it's not too late. I mean, it's, it's really just beginning. And I think that's a lot. And that's why we started the Mortgage Video Mastermind. Um, and I'm grateful for Scott for being with me every week because it is that commitment, Laura, you said of not quitting and to get other people with you because for me it was one of those things it's like I don't want to do this on my own um, let's start a tribe we're a community and so you know having you on to be able to share what video has done for you I so appreciate it 
And I can't wait to see you again. I'm not yes. sure what that will be. We'll have to figure that out. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure our paths are crossing at some point at these conferences. Um, I think I'll see you at. I think I'll see you at AIM. You will. Is, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Well, guys, thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. thank you for all of your contribution of helping people get comfortable in video. Your education, your inspiration, and it's truly been a pleasure. And likewise, thank you. Okay, so make sure and tune in next week for another episode of our Mortgage Video Mastermind and share our group and post your videos. So go out and make a video. Thanks, guys. Have a good Friday. Bye. Bye. Thank you.